my name's Adam. I'm in the capital city of Western Australia, Perth, and today I'm going to be travelling on the Prospector to Kalgoorlie, 600 kilometres east of here. But first we have to head to East Perth, uh, which is about 1.9 kilometres from here, or three stops on the Midland Line, which you can see behind me. You might be wondering why the Prospector doesn't begin its journey from the main station here in Perth. The vast majority of railways in Western Australia are narrow gauge, but the Prospector runs on standard gauge, and the standard gauge line from Kalgoorlie ends at East Perth. The standard gauge line to Kalgoorlie provides the major freight link between Perth and the rest of Australia, Kalgoorlie being the start of the Trans-Australian Railway. This is dual gauge track. You can see the difference between the narrow and standard gauge lines. And here's our train, the Prospector. The 650 metre platform might seem long for such a short train, but it's also used by the luxury train, the Indian Pacific to Adelaide and Sydney. The Indian Pacific is typically 30 carriages long. In today's journey, we'll travel 653 kilometres with a journey time of 6 hours and 50 minutes. You can see from this satellite imagery how the landscape will become much drier as we head towards the Goldfields region. The rail cars which now operate the service were introduced in 2004. The trains are capable of 200 km per hour, but are limited by track speed to 160 km per hour. Today's service is extraordinarily busy, including tour groups and a high school group. East Perth Station includes a cafe, historic railway carriages, and an example of the first locomotive type to be built and designed in Western Australia, the narrow gauge S-Class. Luggage can be checked in with the staff on the platform before departure. Let's hop aboard. A staff member will check you in and direct you to your seat. I'm seated in the front coach in a window seat. We'll take a closer look later. We depart East Perth on schedule. The Prospector was introduced 50 years ago in 1971, replacing an overnight train and cutting travel time from 14 hours to 8 hours. Before the standard gauge line from Perth opened in 1968, passengers heading to the eastern states had to change trains in Kalgoorlie because of the break of gauge. We pass the state's premier railway history museum, which is definitely worth visiting if you're in Perth. The collection includes a bullion car used to transport gold from Kalgoorlie and a scale model of the original Prospector rail cars. Introduced in 1971, they were the fastest and largest rail cars in Australia at the time. But I'm glad the rail cars operating the Prospector today are far more modern. Let's take a quick look around the seat. There's overhead lockers, similar to those found on a plane. The seats are comfortable, with reasonable legroom and an entertainment screen. They are reversible, so all passengers face the direction of travel. My seat is behind a bulkhead, so has slightly restricted legroom compared to most seats and is also missing a footrest and at seat power. There's a small tray table in the armrest. At most seats, this is a fold down table. Today's service is close to fully booked, but I got lucky and have an empty seat beside me. 
there are also adjustable air vents and reading lamps. Guildford was founded in 1829 as one of the earliest settlements of the Swan River Colony. We stopped to pick up passengers in Midland, which is the current terminus of the Perth Electrified Suburban Network. However, the network is being extended east to Bellevue. Here's the timetable for today's journey. Most stops are request stops, meaning we'll only stop if passengers are booked to get on or off. And with most passengers travelling all the way to Kalgoorlie, there won't be many of those. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We're sure to be turning on the entertainment system. And I ask that you watch the short video on the safety features and general information on today's prospectus service. There are several emergency exits on this car set. We do ask that you take a few moments to locate the one nearest to you, bearing in mind that you may be in front of you or behind you. <coughs> we do ask that in the unlikely event that we need to evacuate the train, passengers pay attention to the announcements from staff at all times. The buffet will open shortly after the safety video has finished and we have completed all safety and manifest checks. We will make an announcement when the buffet opening. Thank you and good morning. The Swan Valley is home to a number of vineyards. Before long we've left suburbia and are heading into the Darling Range along the Swan and Avon rivers. This is probably the most scenic part of the journey. The best views are from the left hand side of the train if you're heading in the same direction as me. The route becomes progressively more windy as we head through the Swan Valley. There's a great feature on the entertainment system called Driver Cam. The image isn't the best quality and is slightly delayed, so things pass your window before they appear on the screen. But it's cool to see nonetheless. The rail line is duplicated for much of the journey through the Avon Valley. The entertainment system also features a moving map, a range of TV shows, movies and music. There's no Wi-Fi or USB charging points. However, Wi-Fi is being installed in a trial for 2022.
we average 90 km per hour through this area. We're now approaching the town of 2J, which used to be called Newcastle, but its name was changed after confusion with the city of the same name in New South Wales. The front car has an accessible toilet, so it's quite large and has a baby change table. It was kept relatively clean throughout the journey. After Northam, we leave the Avon Valley and the environment gradually becomes drier. Northam also marks the end of the dual gauge line, so it's standard gauge only from here. We're now passing Meckering, which is famous for a 6.5 magnitude earthquake in 1968 lasting 40 seconds and which was felt up to 700 kilometres away. The quake badly damaged the town, injured dozens of people and twisted and buckled the rail line. Time for a mid-morning snack. Yes, uh, can I get a fruit salad uh, and a latte? The fruit salad and coffee cost me $7.90. The salad should really be named a watermelon salad based on the quantity of that fruit. Here's a look at the buffet menu, which I'll also link to in the description below. Our speed increases to 120 km per hour. That is, until we stop at a red signal. The staff tell us it's faulty. We get a green light after a wait of about 10 minutes. Let's have a little tour of the train. So this is coach one, which also features the buffet. Chilled drinking water available in the vestibule. Car 2 is made up almost entirely of an organised tour group. And I chose not to film in the rear car because it's filled with a state school sporting team on their way to compete in Kalgoorlie. So we'll quickly head back through car 2 towards my seat in the front car. At the start of the trip, the staff handed out headphones for passengers to use with the in-seat entertainment, but you can also use your own. The buffet proved quite popular throughout the journey. There's a mad dash to the buffet when the staff announce it will be closing ahead of the staff changeover at our next stop, Meriden. 
Morning, ladies and gentlemen, now arriving in to Meriden Station. Passengers leaving the train to stop, please gather all personal belongings, collect any luggage you have, and exit through the centre doors to the car. For all remaining passengers travelling almost to Calgary and intermediate stations, there will be a short opportunity for you to leave the train, stretch your legs. However, this will be a brief stop when we do ask passengers to remain alongside the train on the platform. Do not wander off down the lower platform into the car park, across the shops, far side the railway line. The prospector will leave in short notice and you're on there as being left behind at Meriden Station. Calgary crew do not check for any missing passengers prior to leaving Meriden. There are no toilet facilities on the platform of Meriden. Passengers should use facilities on board the prospector. We do ask all passengers to reboard the train as quickly as possible when asked to do so by the Calgary crew. Once again, I stress the Calgary crew do not check for any missing passengers prior to leaving Meriden Station. Do ask passengers take care when making your way through to the centre doors while the train is in motion as we do cross railway line on our approach into Meriden platform. Please use the handrails provided. On behalf of your Perth crew, Wendy, Martin and Kieran, we'll be leaving you here. I hope you enjoy the remainder of your journey through to Calgary. Thank you and good morning. Meriden is located in the central wheat belt, roughly halfway between Perth and Kalgoorlie. At Meriden, we await the train heading towards Perth. The crew swap over, so the Perth crew return to Perth and the Kalgoorlie crew can take our train to Kalgoorlie. Here's the two-car prospector arriving from Kalgoorlie. You might have heard the guard's warning not to leave the platform here in Meriden. Well, one passenger decided to dash over to the bakery and was promptly told off by the guard on her return. We depart Meriden about 20 minutes behind schedule. Although Carabin has a population of zero based on the 2016 census, the station serves the wider agricultural and mining community who live in the area. The buffet is licensed and a lot of people order drinks after Meriden, with or without food. 4x beer and white wine seem to be the most popular choices. It's time for lunch. Other than pies and sausage rolls, there is a hot meal option. Today it's ravioli. It takes about six minutes to heat. 
I also order sparkling wine and the total price comes to $18.50. I know other Australians like to poke fun at Adelaide, but the wine on this train, which goes down a treat, is from the Barossa Valley, just north of Adelaide. The pasta is okay, but a bit overcooked and hard in parts. It tastes like it's been cooked too long in the microwave. We pass a number of salt lakes. Roughly three quarters of freight between the eastern states and Perth goes by rail. These freight trains can be up to 1.8 kilometres long. The staff come through the train periodically to collect rubbish. But there doesn't appear to be any recycling options on board, which is disappointing given cardboard drink holders, wine bottles and cans are sold on the train. We reach 130 km per hour on the approach to Kulyanobing. Kulyanobing is the only stop we make between Meriden and Kalgoorlie, with one passenger alighting. This siding serves an iron ore mine. The scenery becomes more arid as we head further east. The entertainment screens can also be a bit unreliable. The buffet closes just after 1.30, with passengers invited to make any last minute purchases. If we were on time, this would be about 25 minutes before our arrival, but we're running almost 30 minutes late. Headsets, please place in the bag with all your rubbish. As the prospect is on a quick turnaround once it gets back to Kelgaloo Station this afternoon, we kindly ask that you place tray table seats and put rest all in the upright position and open up any curtains at the window. Thank you. As we're on the approach to Kalgoorlie, let me give you my thoughts on this journey. The Prospector is a modern train with comfortable seats and is a very enjoyable way to head to the goldfields. Although speed restrictions and signalling issues delayed our journey and the pasta lunch wasn't the best, I still love this train overall and would recommend it. The staff were very friendly and the buffet prices were very reasonable. So how much is a ticket? The adult fare from Perth to Kalgoorlie is $93.65 which I think is a very reasonable price to travel 650 kilometres in air-conditioned comfort. Ladies and gentlemen, the Prospector is now making its way into Kalgoorlie Station where this service will terminate. Please remain seated until the train has come to a complete stop. Also take care when accessing luggage from overhead lockers and remember to check around your seats for personal belongings and hand luggage before exiting the train. If you require any assistance exiting the train, please remain seated once all other passengers have been disembarked. One of our crew members will gladly assist you. All unaccompanied children must remain with a staff member until collected by a parent or guardian. On behalf of Trains WA, the driver and the crew, we'd like to thank you for travelling with us today and we welcome you all to Kalgoorlie. The Prospector runs daily in each direction. On Mondays and Fridays, there are two trains each way, one in the morning and one in the afternoon. As it's a Monday, our train will return to Perth in about 30 minutes.
Here's a final look at the seats and the interior of the train. Kalgoorlie has one of the longest platforms in Western Australia at 527 metres. Until 1968, passengers wishing to travel across to the eastern states had to change here from a narrow gauge train to a standard gauge train called the Trans-Australian, which made the journey from here to Port Augusta in South Australia. Nowadays, the Indian Pacific travels through here once a week in each direction although it's currently suspended because of state border restrictions. If you spend any time in Kalgoorlie, you'll see plenty of freight trains, such as this cement train. And this Pacific National Steel train heading across the Nullarbor to Adelaide and Melbourne. Kalgoorlie Station opened in 1896 and is within walking distance of the town centre. Kalgoorlie is famous for gold mining and is home to Australia's second largest open cut gold mine, the Super Pit. I got these shots on my flight back to Perth. from one yellow train to another. Next, we're heading to Queensland to catch the electric tilt train from Brisbane to Rockhampton. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss it. And if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. Hope to see you then.